Good afternoon, everyone. Start with some brief comments. I would like to begin by reiterating our condolences to the families of those who were killed by Hamas terrorist attacks against Israel, including the 14 American citizens who we know have died. The Department is actively engaging with the families of those U.S. citizens. None of us can imagine the grief that they are feeling today, and we are doing everything we can in our power to offer them all appropriate consular assistance. I also want to talk about Secretary Blinken's efforts over the past four days since Hamas launched its initial terrorist attacks against Israel, which have been focused on three key priorities. First and foremost, the Secretary has been engaged with our Israeli partners to ensure that Israel has everything that it needs to defend itself. Both President Biden and Secretary Blinken have made clear that we stand ready to offer all appropriate means of support to the government and people of Israel. The first tranche of security assistance is on its way and will arrive in the coming days, and more will follow. Second, the Secretary has been working the phones with his foreign counterparts to ensure that anyone who has lines of communication with parties hostile to Israel should use those channels to say that now is not the time to take advantage of this situation. The President has made that point clear, uh, has made that point clearly and forcefully, and is one that Secretary Blinken has reiterated in his calls with leaders in the region. Third, the Secretary has been intensely focused on securing the release of all hostages held in Gaza. There are a number of countries who have the ability to deliver messages to Hamas, and we have made clear to those countries that they should urge Hamas to release all hostages immediately. This is a matter we take incredibly seriously. Finally, I'd like to announce that Secretary Blinken will be traveling to Israel in the coming days to engage our Israeli partners directly about the situation on the ground and how we can continue to best support them in their fight against the terrorists who launched these horrific attacks. Our support for Israel is unwavering, and the Secretary looks forward to meeting with senior leaders in the Israeli government and continuing the discussions he and the President have been having with them since the initial attacks on Saturday. And with that, Matt. Uh, in the coming days, if you want to be more specific. Our expectation is that we will leave tomorrow and arrive in Israel on Thursday. Uh, okay. And is he going to go anywhere else? Uh, I don't have announcements uh, to make. This is a trip we're still putting together at the time, but uh, we'll make uh, may have further announcements on that later this afternoon. All right. And then on, uh, so Jake Sullivan at the White House just said there are 20, roughly 20 Americans missing. Uh, that's correct. There are, um, uh, the, the last number I had before coming out here was that there are 20 uh, Americans who remain unaccounted for. That's a number that has been moving around over the last few days. You have a, one number and then um, uh, some of the people who are unaccounted for, uh, unfortunately, uh, you discover are actually deceased or then some may, may turn up. But right now the number that we're tracking is 20. Uh, and, you, and you have no idea uh, of those 20, how many of their family, you know, how many of them their, do, do their families believe that they are actually being? Uh, we don't have definitive information, but we do believe it's likely that there uh, may be hostages um, who are U.S. citizens who are held in Gaza. Yeah. This, go, this, oh, go ahead. We'll Sir, start I'll, and then go I'll over. Brief, but, but can you just uh, like, explain a little bit more what, what the Secretary's message will be? You said he wants to confer with people, but will it be a message of, uh, of solidarity? Will he discuss in depth the, the conflict um, and the, the maneuvers, that, that the, the actions that Israel is taking now? It will be a message of solidarity and support. Uh, he, of course, wants to hear from the leaders uh, uh, of Israel, um, hear from them directly about the situation they're facing, hear from them directly about what they need and how we can best support them, and then to send a message to the government of Israel and the people of Israel that we are there to support them uh, as they fight against these brutal terrorist attacks and to talk about what additional assistance we can provide them. Just on the hostages, can you talk a little bit about what engagements the State Department has had trying to secure their release um, with Israeli partners and others? Uh, I'm not going to talk in more detail other than what I said in my opening comments. The Secretary has had a round of calls over the weekend. You've probably seen those as we've um, uh, been reading those, those uh, calls out. And he has delivered a message consistently with everyone in the region. If there is anything you can do to send a message to those who are holding uh, 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 hostages, whether they be American citizens or whether they be others, that you should send the message to Hamas that they need to release those hostages immediately. And what is the U.S. telling the Israelis about a ground operation given these U.S. hostages? Um, uh, we understand that Israel was uh, brutally attacked here. Uh, Israel has a right to defend itself. Israel has a right to conduct operations to, uh, 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 to, to ensure the security of its citizens, to ensure the security of its nation. Uh, and we are in co communications with them about that. But those are decisions for Israel to make. 
you have concerns that such an operation would hamper any efforts to secure their release unharmed? Uh, we don't, look, our, our point right now is that Hamas ought to release all of the hostages immediately. That's the effort that we have been engaged in. I wouldn't want to speak to, to anything beyond that. Can I follow up? Um, the partners that you're engaging with to engage with Hamas, are they being productive? Is Hamas even acknowledging that they're holding Americans right uh, now? I'm not going to speak to the details of those conversations. Uh, we do believe that, that there are um, uh, partners in the region who are playing a productive role here uh, and want to help secure the release of hostages. Um, but in, in terms of details of those efforts, I'm not going talk, to talk about them publicly. And who from the U.S. is leading those efforts? Uh, uh, again, I think there are a number of people inside the U.S. government. Well, I'll say two things. One, the Secretary has been involved, in, engaged in direct conversations with his counterparts. Um, the U.S. government is also making uh, available to Israel uh, experts in hostage negotiations and hostage, hostage recovery. That includes experts from the State Department. I'm not going to talk about those in detail. Those are private conversations we're having with the Israeli government. Uh, there are a number of experts from in, across the government who we are going to make available. Olivia. Thank you, Matt. There's, there's public reporting that, that the, the talks via the Qataris involve a possible swap of women and children being held in Hamas for women and children being held in Israeli jails. Can you comment at all whether the contours of those kinds of negotiations are accurate? Uh, again, I'm not going to talk about uh, the details of any conversations other than to say that we have made clear that Hamas ought to release all of those prisoners immediately. Um, that is our position. That is what we have advocated for. That's what we think Hamas should do. Separately. Um, are, are there Americans who are asking the State Department for assistance to leave uh, the region, whether from Israel or from Gaza? We have been in contact with a number of American citizens in Israel. There are a number of American citizens who are longtime residents of Israel, some of them who are dual citizens, some of them who have just moved there. And then there are Americans who are there that were either visiting for, for business or for tourism or something else. And we have been in contact with a number of Americans through our embassy there, um, uh, some who we have helped facilitate travel to depart the country. Um, the airport is still open. There are flights that are getting out uh, of the, the airport in Tel Aviv. Um, and so we encourage encourage people to make the, you know, to, 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 to try to avail themselves of those options. We have also been in conversations with various carriers to encourage them to consider um, uh, resuming travel in and out of Israel, and we'll continue to do that. I don't, I don't, I don't hold, on, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you have another one? Or? I, I do have a few more uh, on the region. Um, I mean, American officials, to include the secretary, have said that there's no uh, direct evidence linking Iran uh, to, to this specific Hamas-led attack. First. Is there any update on that assessment? And then second, can you elaborate a bit on what the U.S. would consider direct involvement by the Iranians? So we do not have any information to suggest that Iran either directed or orchestrated these attacks by Hamas. Um, Iran likely knew that Hamas was planning operations against Israel, uh, but without the precise timing or scope of what occurred. Um, Iran has, of course, long supported Hamas uh, with material and financial support, but we have not yet seen anything to suggest that they supported or were behind this current attack. Um, but our experience in these matters tell us that it's pre premature to draw any final conclusions about this issue. Uh, we'll be looking at additional intelligence in the coming weeks and days to um, inform our thinking on this issue, including whether at least there were some in the Iranian system who either had a clear sense of what was coming or even contributed to aspects of the planning. If you'll allow me one more. Um, sure. I mean, so Egypt, the Egyptians claim to have issued explicit and direct warnings to the Israelis that something was coming from Gaza uh, and from Hamas. Uh, does the U.S. have independent knowledge of any of those warnings, either being issued to Israel or receiving them directly from the Egyptians? Uh, I will let Israel speak to any conversations they had with Egypt. Um, go ahead, Shannon. Thank you. Um, back to Iran. Going, looking at how if the regime had direct knowledge of an attack, the timing of it, how much does that matter to the administration, given what you know, the material support, the military support, the millions of dollars you've been funneling into this organization Hamas? So I will say that, that uh, first of all, I wouldn't want to get ahead of what this assessment may ultimately find. We are in the early days uh, after these attacks. Um, our first focus has been on helping Israel respond to these attacks, but we will continue to examine all intelligence and collect new intelligence, collect new information, talk with our Israeli partners about anything that, that they find. But I will say, as we have made clear, that Iran has long supported Hamas. Uh, Hamas would not be what it is today without the financial uh, and material backing that they have gotten from Iran. So um, yes, we very much do um, uh, believe that Iran is at least complicit in these attacks, even if we do not yet have any evidence to show that they directed or orchestrated them. 
Will that complicity, will there be any kind of response? I know you don't want to get into specifics, but. So I wouldn't want to preview any actions that we might take. We have uh, taken a number of actions since the beginning of this administration to hold Iran accountable for its malign activities in the region, including its support for terrorism. That includes more than 400 sanctions that we have imposed on Iran. We will continue to take our actions to hold Iran accountable, but I wouldn't want to preview from here what those might look like. Follow yeah, up Go ahead, and then I'll come. Um, then I'll come to Abby. Talk, uh, especially among Republicans, about freezing, refreezing the six billion dollars in funds that had been transferred to Qatar to secure the release of the Americans. Is that under consideration? So um, I think you're talking about the the funds that come from Iranian oil revenue um, that uh, I've heard people say could be used to fund malign activities. Um, I want to give a very clear response. So if you'll um, uh, indulge me, I'm just going to read uh, uh, something here. Iran will have zero oil revenue to spend on any of these things. Let me say that again. Zero. One hundred percent of the revenue that Iran receives from the sale of crude oil will be held in foreign accounts and can be used by Iran only for humanitarian trade or bilateral trade in non-sanctioned goods and services. Um, and I will point out that is not a quote from anyone in this administration. That is a quote from former Secretary Mike Pompeo, delivered at the State Department on November 2, 2018 when he established the accounts that, that um, uh, yielded this revenue that Iran is now, now has access to with additional restrictions that we have imposed on them to ensure that, not all, that they can only be used for humanitarian trade, not bilateral trade and non-sanctioned goods, only humanitarian purposes, and we have ongoing mechanisms. Now, with respect to what we might do in the future, we have the ability to freeze those funds if we need to. We've not made any decisions. Matt, that's, that's fine, it, but, you know, it doesn't matter who said it. Whoever said it was wrong, because the money, if Iran has a promise of money, they can use their own money that they have inside their own country, knowing to, to do whatever with it. Uh, they could buy medicine, they could buy food, whatever, they could rebuild a bridge, they could do that, but they know that they have six billion dollars sitting in Qatar right now, okay? So whether Secretary Pompeo said it and said that the money would only be used for that purpose, yeah, or whether you guys are saying, it, yes, maybe that specific dollar with that serial note, uh, the serial number, uh, or that euro with that serial number on it can't be used to fund terrorism. But the fact of the matter is, and you guys know this, no is that it allows or it frees up money that Iran has already inside its own country to use for other things so they don't have to spend that money on so these let me non-sanctioned items let me say two things about that one the reason i read this exact quote is i have heard a number a, a, a fair bit of criticism about this money including from the person who said this in November of 2018. And I thought it was fair to point out that this money was first allowed to accrue into these accounts under the Trump administration. Well, and that's, and that's a point the same, the same, uh, you, it, it, you back did, then as well. You did, and there are a number of people who have had a lot to say about this the, uh, the last few days who have conveniently forgot that fact, which is why I thought it was important to remind the world. The second thing I will say is that Iran has, of course, always funded terrorism. Uh, they have always funded malign activities in the region, and that's why we have always taken action to hold them account. But this uh, money can only be used for humanitarian purposes. Not a cent of it has been fro has been spent but at this point, and we have the ability to freeze it at any time. That is, that is not the criticism that you're I, getting. The criticism you're getting is that, 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 is that, that, this, allow, that this frees up money inside Iran to, that they can use for malign purposes, as, and there, as you said. And there is just no evidence that that is accurate. When we have well, seen, when we have seen, when we have seen, when we have can the, you, can the you evidence, say, so the, you say that there's no evidence that Iran has used money over the course of the last month or month and a half since, since the money arrived, month, the, since the money arrived in Qatar, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to send to Hamas. Can you say Iran that? You has know? funded terrorism before these accounts were established during the Trump administration. They have funded terrorism after these accounts were established in the, the Trump administration. They will no doubt continue to fund terrorism in the future, which is why we have sought to hold them accountable. With respect to this money, it cannot be used for anything but humanitarian purposes. We have strict oversight. We have strict visibility. And if we see it being used for anything else, we can shut it down immediately. Thank you. Go, Sa Saeed, go ahead. Let me just, yeah. Sa okay. Yeah. I, you know what? We're uh, going to move around. Saeed, yeah. go ahead. Uh, although, although, the although the president uh, did not call for restraint, 
before the Israelis to exercise restraint in the upcoming or the, you know, the speculated to be upcoming uh, ground uh, invasion. The president did mention that Israel ought to abide by international law. Does that, in your view, mean that Israel must end its cutoff of water, electricity, food, and medicine to the people in Gaza? Uh, I will say that, uh, as the president made clear, Israel has suffered uh, uh, from a brutal terrorist attack. Israel has the right to defend itself. It has the right to take action against the terrorists who launched this brutal attack and killed Israeli civilians. It killed American civilians, killed mothers and children and babies and kidnapped children. And so they are and so they are going to they are going to take action to to respond to this terrorist attack and take action to secure their country. And we support them. As the president made clear, we uh, always encourage all of our allies and partners to act in strict accordance with um, uh, international national law. That is what democracies do. And I would just point out that, of course, is not what Hamas did. Let me just, Saeed, let me just finish. That is not, Saeed, let me, that is not what Hamas did in coming into Israel and kidnapping and murdering innocent civilians. Okay. I understand. I mean, Hamas, you have Hamas listed as a terrorist organization. They don't get $4 billion a year from you. They don't have military aid and support and so on. So that is established. You're saying that Israel is democracy. It's a country that abides by international law. I'm asking you, the cutoff of water, electricity, food, and medicine is considered a war crime. Do you call on Israel to seize its effect, its, uh, its effort now so in cutting off medicine, let water, Let me start by saying that we are in the early days of Israel's response. Israel has a right to, to, to conduct uh, an aggressive response to respond to the terrorism that's been committed uh, 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 against its citizens. We expect them to follow international law. We believe that they will, and we will remain in close contact with them about you, you it. You believe they should not intentionally target civilians? That's one. Second, do you have any idea on the number of Palestinians killed by Israel in the last four days? I, I have seen public reports. What are these? I, I'm, I am not going to speak are to the, the so I, so in the thousands? Said, I'm going to speak to what the U.S. government can verify, which I've done with a number of U.S. citizens. I will let Israel speak to the number of Israeli citizens that have killed, as well as the number you know of Palestinians that have killed. The, the, the 14 that the president spoke about are Palestinian Americans? Uh, I, don't, I don't have any degree whether they are Palestinian Americans, whether they're dual citizens. It ultimately doesn't matter to us. American and my, citizens and my, are American and my last citizens. my question to you, uh, Matt, I mean, the president said that Hamas is motivated, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, motivated solely by the quest to kill Jews. Do you believe that is to be the case? Is it the assessment of this government that Hamas sole motivation is to go out and kill Jews? There's no context. There's no siege that has gone on so, for 16 years. There's no uh, raid after raid so uh, by the Israelis. So, Saeed, I, I am just going to say that that is a bit of a surprising question no, after I'm what we saying, saw Hamas carry out this weekend, when no, we saw I'm Hamas go in I'm and deliberately not. target Israeli citizens, not. And, and not just soldiers in the IDF, but women, children, kidnapped them. We all saw the images That's that all across our you, television you, screens you of Hamas that, behaving in the most inhumane way possible. Okay. So I won't no, speak no, to their I'm motivations, saying, but I think they're pretty you, clear. I'm let me, let me, let me move on. Context. Go ahead. Let me go ahead. Thank you very much, Matt. I have a question about the U.S. wall, potential U.S. wall. There's been this uh, strike carrier group that has been dispatched to the area to the uh, eastern Mediterranean, and now there's reports that the second carrier group might be on the way to near Israel. So today the Turkish president asked what the U.S. warships sent near Israel are there for, and it's a question a number of countries in the region are trying to find an answer for. So uh, is the U.S. really looking to get involved militarily? Can you rule that out? Because that could I mean, a catastrophic all-around regional conflict immediately. So we do not have any plans for boots on the ground or military action at this point. I will let the Pentagon speak to the specifics of deployments. But as the president has made clear, um, he has uh, uh, ordered the Pentagon to take these efforts to send a clear deterrent message to anyone who is considering entering this conflict, any of the uh, any entity or uh, who is hostile to is to Israel, um, to take note uh, uh, and to not take action. The, I thought the president spoke very forcefully to that question today. Hamas. Go ahead. Thank you, Matt. Uh, on connection between Hamas and North Korea, uh, Hamas and North Korea have been engaging in arms trading for some time. What are you concerned about the North Korea's announcement to that it supports Hamas? 
Well, we clearly um, uh, would be concerned about any country that is uh, providing support to Hamas, whether it be financial, whether it be military, uh, and would look to counter that action. And we do it first and foremost by making sure that Israel has what it needs to defend itself against the recent terrorist attacks. Does Israel have a right go, to kill civilians? Go ahead. Does Israel have a right to kill civilians? Now, I'm going to call on people. The, the way we do it in this briefing room, and you and I have had this, conver you and I have had this conversation before, is I call on people and they ask questions and I move around. Go ahead. Yesterday, Secretary Blinken deleted a tweet uh, related to his uh, phone call with Turkish uh, Foreign Minister. Uh, the tweet included, included the mention of the ceasefire. Uh, well, was that the reason the word ceasefire was the reason behind why he deleted the tweet? I, I'm glad you asked me that question because there's been a, a bit of misinformation about it. So after his call with Foreign Minister Fadan, we released a public readout that made clear that the secretary in his conversation uh, had reiterated what we have said publicly a number of times, which is Hamas should cease its violent activities against Israel. The tweet was unfortunately worded, did not capture that appropriately, so we pulled it down. And I've seen a lot of people, a lot of public conversation about this. I think those who, uh, I think you would have to be intentionally misunderstanding what our position is given the number of statements that we have made about supporting Israel's right to defend itself, uh, about supporting Israel taking direct action against Hamas. The Secretary spoke to that publicly uh, on, on Sunday, on the Sunday shows. The President has spoken to it forcefully, and we've issued a number of statements uh, making that clear. A Turkish President Erdogan said Ankara is uh, prepared to take on a mediator role uh, in the ongoing Palestinian and Israeli uh, tension. Uh, what is the U.S. position on this offer, and was that uh, discussed during the phone call uh, between Blinken and Fidan? So I won't speak to any potential mediation. I will say, uh, with respect to the conversation that the secretary had, uh, we released a readout with um, uh, information about his conversation with uh, Foreign Minister Fidan. We made clear in that conversation, uh, as we have in all of our conversations, that anything they can do to keep other parties from entering this conflict, anything that they can do to secure the release of hostages is something we would encourage and something we would support. Go ahead. Thank you, Matt. I have two questions, one on Hamas and the other one on Syria. The first one, have you noticed the statements that issued by the Iraqi leaders and Iraqi governmental uh, officials about uh, events and escalation in Gaza and also in Israel? including Hadi al-Amri, the leader of the Iranian-backed battle organization, issued a threat to the U.S. forces in Iraq and also elsewhere. He said that if the U.S. will interfere into the Israel and also helping Israel against Hamas, we are not hesitating to target the U.S. forces. So I won't speak to those comments specifically other than to say um, that the U.S. Uh, for U.S. forces will do everything they have to defend to everything they have to to defend themselves, as is always the case. Have you, have you took those warnings seriously? Uh, I, I'm not going to speak to it other than the comment I just May made. I ask, and I would refer you to the Pentagon for specific comments on U.S. forces. I have another question on Syria. May I ask now? Or uh, let's come back to Abby. it. Abby, go ahead. Can I go back to some of these questions about Iran? Um, sure. I know you're not being specific about any um, U.S. response to their complicity in these attacks, but are you encouraging um, any of your partners to take actions? Um, for instance, are you asking um, for countries to designate the IRGC as a terrorist organization who haven't done so before? Uh, we absolutely think that other countries should designate the uh, uh, IRGC as a terrorist organization. It's a position that we've made clear a number of times. They uh, finance terrorist activities they have around the world for some time, and we think that other countries should take that step of designating them. Are you having any specific conversations with uh, your European partners and, and pushing them to, to make this move now? I, I won't speak to specific conversations with respect to Iran. Uh, again, as I said, they are broadly complicit in supporting Hamas, have, have been so for years. Uh, but we're going to continue to gather evidence and intelligence about it, whether there was any direct involvement in these attacks before making uh, in, taking any further steps. Yeah, Alex, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, just uh, what would you say about the Europeans? Um, the I'm sure you saw, seen the, the European debate on, on assistance to the Palestinian Authority. Um, if, uh, initially talking about a freeze in, in development assistance and then reversing that. Does the United States have any have any take on that? And how has the U.S.'s own uh, aid posture been affected by um, events this weekend? I, I believe they did reverse that, uh, which is a step that, that we welcomed. Um, we have made very clear that um, uh, we do not have any grievance with the Palestinian people. Um, as I have said from this podium a number of times, we have taken we support steps that improve the livelihoods, improve the dignity of the Palestinian people. Um, and we and, and we and we supply and we supply human excuse me and we and and we supply excuse me and we supply humanitarian aid that goes directly to the Palestinian people uh, to benefit them. 
And I think the point that we would make, this is something the Secretary got into over the weekend. There are two paths forward for the, for the region. Uh, there is a path of stability and conflict and normalization of relations with Israel. And then there is a, a, a path of death and destruction, and it is Hamas that favors that path of death and destruction. We do not have any quarrel with the uh, uh, Palestinian people, which is why we think it's important to continue to provide a humanitarian aid that directly benefits them, not the terrorists who are trying, who, the terrorists who ultimately are going to be responsible for the loss of many Palestinian lives. But Israel is, is no, uh, down you know, I, I, I am going to, I'm going to ask that we, I'm, this is, this is not a, this is, this room is not a debating session. It's questions and answers. Go ahead. Um, one, is the U.S. re-evaluating its alliance with Qatar given Qatar's support for Hamas? And um, I want to follow up on Vivian's question about U.S. citizens. So U.S. citizens are having difficulty getting out of Israel. On a personal note, a friend of mine and his wife and two of their friends are trying to get out. They filled out some State Department form and haven't heard back. So I don't, what advice do you have for U.S. citizens uh, like them? Um, and then regarding going off of Matt, um, I mean, what do you say to the criticism regarding the unfreezing of the $6 billion that money is fungible? So I, I will say that I already answered the question about money being fungible in great detail, I think, with Matt. I can repeat it again, but that probably isn't productive for, for any of us. I will say, give me the, the first question uh, again. Uh, yes. The second uh, one, but... Yeah, is the no, U.S. Cut, cut, cutter right? So, with respect to Cutter, the secretary's had a number of productive conversations with the foreign minister of Cutter. We actually think that they are playing a productive role here, uh, and will continue to be partners of, of the United States. We are asking Cutter, as we are asking every country, to use any influence that they have uh, to keep other parties from coming into this conflict and to secure the release of hostages. And the second Even question, and, 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 and the second question was. Uh, se second question is, U.S. citizens are having oh, difficulty right, getting right. out. Um, so, um, look, we understand that there are a number of American citizens who want to leave Israel and that currently it may be that there aren't enough available flights because some carriers have, sus ha have suspended travel. Um, as I said, we have been in discussions with carriers urging them to consider whether they want to, to resume travel. There are still flights that are making it out of, of Israel, um, some El Al flights, other flights to, to, uh, uh, operated by carriers uh, in the region. Region. And so we would encourage U.S. citizens to try to take advantage of those flights or other routes out of. And if they do do if they do contact the the um, uh, embassy, we will seek to facilitate travel with any information that we have that can be helpful. And does, and one, and just Go a quick ahead. one last one. Yeah. Um, does the United States believe that the war between Israel and Hamas will be long? Uh, I'm not going to speculate about yeah. the the future. Okay. Alex, go ahead, and I'll come to you okay. next. Thank okay. you very much. I have the question uh, about. Um, yeah, thank you, Matt. Uh, why has the Palestinian Authority leader Abbas not condemned the genocide against Israel, and what does that indicate? And I have a follow-up. So I will let every leader speak to themselves about why they make the statements they do or don't make. Uh, but we have been clear uh, about the, the the horrific, violent attacks that were committed against Israel this weekend. Uh, we've made clear what the United States' position is on that matter, and we'll continue to do so. Okay. Secondly, uh, how is the Palestinian Authority's official policy? of pay to slay any different from what Hamas did on October 7th? So I will say that we oppose that policy, and with respect to um, the aid that we provide through humanitarian organizations to the region, we comply fully with the Taylor Force Act that presents, prevents any U U.S. funds from being used uh, in that regard. Alex, go ahead. Thanks, Matt. Uh, anything you can tell us about uh, perceived Russian involvement in human Russian connections with uh, I, I don't have any evidence of that to speak to at this, this <laughs> moment. Uh, can you speak to uh, some of the efforts on your end to figure out why everyone was so blindsided? Israel? Look, I think there will be a time to, add, to, to look at those kind of questions about intelligence. I'm sure that the Israeli government will take that very seriously. But I, I believe that their focus right now is responding to these attacks. Our focus right now is helping uh, support them as they respond to those attacks and getting the security assistance they need to do so effectively. And that's our focus right now. There will be a time to answer those questions. Um, just one more, if I may. Uh, given everything you have told us, that you know that Iran knew this was coming, um, at what point? I don't believe that's will, exactly what I said. But yeah, I'm just you know, giving the suggestions coming from the Hill. Uh, uh, at what point administration will be open to reconsidering its to, to reverse course on Iran? Is there, are, are you waiting for other shoes to drop, or is there any active? 
I don't discussion. know what you mean by reverse course or on Iran. As I've said, we've imposed more than 400 sanctions uh, on Iran since the beginning of this administration, precisely because we've seen their support for terrorism. We've seen the way they've uh, added conflict and, and uh, instability to the region, and we will continue to hold them accountable for those actions. Give us a call. Come back to me later. We'll yeah, go, go ahead, and then we'll. So, uh, follow up on uh, what Alex is saying uh, about Russia. Uh, because you, you've repeatedly you know, said, warned any other entities to not not to take advantage of the situation. Does that re uh, I mean include Russia? Because you know we've heard uh, President Zelensky saying that you know Russia is seeking to exacerbate the conflict and to distract you know from from its war. So do you do you agree with him? And uh, also on, on um, to follow up on that, what Said was saying. Uh, do you, I mean, the, the, is the concrete, you know, example of um, the siege that Israel is laying, um, is that okay in your book? I mean, is that, uh, uh, do you approve of that, the Israeli approach so far? Uh, I will say with respect to the first question that the president was quite clear uh, on Saturday when he spoke to this, and he was quite clear when he spoke to this question uh, earlier today that no one hostile to Israel should to look to this moment to take advantage of the current conflict. Uh, and I don't have anything to add to elaborate to that, that question. Um, with respect to the second question, look, as I said, it is Hamas who launched these terrorist attacks against Israel. It is Hamas who brutalized uh, 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 Israeli, Israeli civilians. Israel has every right to respond forcefully to these attacks. It is what any country would do if they saw children being dragged uh, uh, away as hostages, if they saw children being slaughtered, if they saw people that were a music festival being gunned down in mass, any country would respond forcefully. We support uh, Israel's right to do it. We think it's appropriate to do it. They have to be able to defend and secure their country. Any country would like to see Go ahead. Thank you. Ghazi Hamid, a Hamas spokesman, meanwhile told the BBC that the group had direct backing for the attack on Israel from Iran. Do you want to comment on it? Uh, we have seen those those quotes. We don't have in, any independent information to verify that. If another Iranian proxy on the region going to join this battlefield with Israel, what will be reaction? Uh, I'm not going to speak to hypotheticals, but the message that we have delivered very clearly from the president on down uh, is that no entity hostile to Iran should consider entering this conflict. Go ahead. Yeah. In, in March, you uh, condemned Israel's finance minister, Bezalel El Smotrich, for calling for wiping the Palestinian village of Huara off the map. Uh, this week, we've heard the defense minister of Israel, Yoav Gallant, declare that he's fighting human animals in Gaza as Israel cuts off the gas, the water, and the electricity. We've heard Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, declare uh, that all hiding places will be turned to rubble in a besieged coastal enclave where there are one million children. We've heard Ariel Kalner, who is a member of Knesset from the ruling Likud party, call for a Nakba 2.0, which is essentially a call for genocide and the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians as 850 are dead in Gaza. So what do you think so of that rhetoric let, in light of your let, previous let, condemnation? Let me say a few things about that. Number one, um, we expect as we said, that Israel will conduct its operations in accordance with international law. Number two, there are going to be a number of statements made uh, over the course of this conflict. And when we have disagreements with them, we will um, make those known privately. Number three, though, some, let, me just, let, me just, let me just speak to this. Number three, some of the questions I'm getting today do seem to ignore the fact that Israel just had hundreds of its citizens killed, people who were taken hostage, and pretend that Israel shouldn't be able to conduct any well, kind of. Uh, let me just say, because shouldn't, rhetoric, can you, can, shouldn't, you just have, shouldn't. Let me just, let me just, that 80 let me. Palestinian children let me, have been killed. Do you let me, acknowledge that? Will you let even me, acknowledge that? Let me finish. 80 Palestinian children uh, killed. You know this what? Week? Uh, again, babies. Let me, do you, you acknowledge that? You asked. You asked a question. I will answer the question. Okay, that's my then, question. So I'm going to start by answering the previous question that was interrupted. I will say some of the questions seem to pretend that Israel should not be able to conduct operations to defend itself and hold accountable the terrorists who killed civilians. That is not Israel's policy. That is not our policy. It is something that we would ve vehemently disagree with. Israel has the right to secure its country the way any country does. It has the right to defend itself against terrorism. It has the right to hold terrorists accountable. Uh, and I will say, uh, ultimately, 
the, the Hamas terrorists who launch these operations, there is no one who has more disregard for Palestinian civilian life than those terrorists. Because those terrorists, let me finish, let me finish. Those terrorists launched this activity. Those terrorists, I, I, again, we have a lot of new, we seem to have a lot of new people. Those terrorists launched this activity knowing that there would be retaliation, knowing that Israel would have to defend itself as any country would did, knowing that it would lead to the unfortunate loss of civilian lives by, their pal by Palestinians, and they did anyway. Let me go, go ahead. That's amazing. So, so baby killing is okay here. Why can't you I, 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 baby killing I, is okay here. We we always uh, we always mourn the loss of civilian life. It is an un, it is an unfortunate circumstance every time it happens. And as I just said, the the Hamas terrorists who launched this terrorist attack, knowing that it would produce the loss of of not just direct Israeli lives, who they took in their incursions across the border, but also the loss of Palestinian civilian life, um, uh, uh, they, they ultimately bear the responsibility for those acts. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask, I'm going to, I, I, I just, I just did do that. I'm going to, I'm going to ask, I'm going to, I am going to, I would ask you not to talk over your colleague. Go ahead. Matt, thank you. Is there a latest U.S. assessment I just did. Saudi I'm going to, go ahead. Go ahead. Let me, let me, there's a, there was a little uh, talking over you. Why don't you go ahead and. Uh, go again, if you Is don't mind. Is there a latest U.S. assessment on Saudi's position on the potential normalization deal with Israel, and especially uh, after Secretary spoke with his counterpart from Saudi, what, 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 what we are at? So the Secretary did speak to this um, uh, somewhat on Sunday when he was asked about it on the, the morning shows. And the point that he made uh, is very simple, which is, there are opponents in the region of normalization. Hamas is an opponent of normalization. Hezbollah is an opponent of normalization. Iran is an opponent of normalization. And they seek to prevent normalization exactly through these terrorist attacks. So we do believe that normalization uh, of relations, not just between Israel and Saudi Arabia, Arabia, but between Israel and other countries in the region, would help bring stability, would help bring peace, um, uh, would help bring prosperity to the region. So it is a path that we will continue to pursue. The other path, as I said a minute ago, is the one outlined by Hamas, which is death and destruction. It is one of the goal of launching these terrorist attacks. And so we will not be deterred in continuing to pursue further normalization, uh, which, as I said, we believe brings stability to the region. You're go, 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 go ahead. Again, I would ask you to stop putting words in my mouth. Go ahead. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I was just uh, one quick question is that uh, President Biden's two-state uh, theory was very much appreciated in many countries in the Southeast Asia side. Is for now, after this incident has happened, is that has gone a little bit on the back burner side? Or no, that's my one question, and then I have one follow-up. No, it continues to be our policy and that we will uh, continue to support. Okay, and then the second one is just, um, you know, because of Taliban, we had a lot of uh, bomb blasts, TTP, had many blasts in Pakistan, where the U.S. bases were there at that time, and the U.S. could have taken very severe actions, uh, you know, against them, where, at least in my city, we had in one school 120 kids being slaughtered, you know, more than several blasts where more than 100 people were dead. Uh, but the U.S. did not do something like that in Afghanistan to, uh, you know, settle things with the... Don't you think because of... U.S. not condemning these things, at least the humanitarian part of the U.S. impression, at least around the world, is going like, don't so, you think for the humanitarian there so should be a little softer? I would softer. say that we always condemn acts of terrorism uh, anywhere that they occur in the world. And as I believe you and I have discussed before, uh, we have met recently with our pa Pakistani counterparts to discuss how we can increase our terrorism uh, cooperation uh, so that they can uh, effectively counter terrorism inside their borders. Alex, I said I'd come back to you and then we're going to wrap you, up here. Yeah, I'll come to you and then we're we'll going to today published an article on, on the NIST website accusing the U.S. of um, interfering, quote unquote, into South Caucasus issues, including Nagorno-Karabakh, for its, quote unquote, 
geopolitical ambitions? Do you have any response to it? Um, well, that's absolutely not true. Our only goal uh, in uh, the in um, the South Caucasus, in the relationship between Armenia and uh, Azerbaijan, is to uh, ensure a la lasting peace and stability, and of course, to ensure that the humanitarian uh, uh, needs and rights of the people of Nagorno-Karabakh Karabakh are protected. And, uh, as you know, senior advisor uh, Obama is in the region. Uh, he met with us. And any doubt on that? And also, secondly, U.S. Embassy to Yerevan was involved in Persian medical evacuation. Any any details? About I would refer you to um, the embassy for any further details on that question. And no, I don't have specific readouts of, of uh, 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 special envoy bonus conversations. Go ahead, and then we'll wrap. Yeah, uh, a question on Syria and Turkish attacks on North East Syria. In just 72 hours, they attacked 150 sites, including the civilian infrastructure, and also the there are a lot of civilian casualties. Do you have any comments on are you condemning these attacks by Turkish on North East Syria? So the United States remains concerned about military activity in northern Syria, its impacts on the civilian population and infrastructure, and the impact on the effectiveness of our operations to ensure the lasting defeat of ISIS. Uh, our position has not changed. We continue to support the current ceasefire lines and call for de-escalation of violence. It is crucial for all sides to maintain and respect ceasefire zones and to de-escalate violent activity to enhance stability in Syria. Uh, and work toward a political solution to the conflict. And with that, we'll wrap. And with that, we'll, and with that, we'll wrap for the day. Thanks, everyone.